Hey there guys, this is Jimmy from Spin Retro. This is a video guide on how to update the latest official firmware that was released back in December 1st, which was about two weeks ago. Now I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the new Android 8.1 update that Retroid team promised two months ago, but Android 8.1 update is still buggy and working in progress, so I wouldn't recommend to the general public to update to Android 8.1 beta just yet. What I have today for you guys is a new stable build of Android 6.0 that fixes many of the issues and introduces new features which I will briefly talk about and go in depth in the later parts of the video. Some of the new features you might have seen in the Android 8.1 beta update are in this version as well without the new box introduced in Android 8.1. So you get good things from both of the worlds. For example, Retroid OS got updated to have better key mapping configuration, as well as the support for multiple safe states and better emulator control. For the Android side, they allowed a feature where you can map the SD card as virtual internal storage. So you can allocate some of the SD card storage space to work as the internal storage, allowing you to install more Android apps without worrying about running out of internal storage space. These are all good changes and it is good to know that the Retro team is working on fixing all of these issues. This Android 6.0 update is definitely nowhere near perfect, but at least we know that Retro team is listening to the community and is doing their best to fix a lot of the issues that the community was facing. Now, there are many methods you can upgrade your device to the latest firmware, but I will be showing you the easiest and most efficient way to update to the latest firmware. After updating it, you'll be able to easily update to 8.1 from the device without the need of PC once they release Android 8.1 down the road. This update really doesn't hurt anybody and everybody should be updating to this latest firmware. With that being said, let's move on to the installation guide and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more contents like this one. As for our first step, we have to determine which version of the device we have and depending on when you got your device, you'll either have an upgrade app installed or not. If you ordered Retroid Pocket 2 before September, you won't have this upgrade app with the blue icon. If that's the case, follow step 2A. If you see upgrade app in your app drawer, then proceed to step 2B. If you're following step 2A, make sure you don't have this blue upgrade icon in the app drawer. You'll need three files. The first file you need is upgrade repair.apk. The next file is update.zip. The third file is recovery.img. I will leave the download links to these files in the video description below. So once you have downloaded these files, you will have these three files. Go ahead and create a new folder called upgrade repair. Make sure you spell this right, this is pretty important. And put recovery and update zip file into this folder. So you have something like this. Next, take the SD card out of your device and plug into your device, um, whether through USB-A micro SD card like this and plug into your PC using the USB-A or SD card reader. My laptop has the SD card reader so I can just slide the SD card and it'll access micro SD that way. So go ahead, copy these files, put it in the root directory, and make sure your SD card has enough storage space, about one gigabyte, because the installation files add up to almost 977 megabyte. Once you have put the files into the SD card, go ahead Put the SD card back into the device. Before we move on to the next step, open the settings, click security, scroll down, and make sure unknown sources is checked on. Next, open up the mix app, open up the hamburger menu, go to root, and look for storage folder, SD card one, find upgrade repair that APK we just placed in the SD card. Click that and click install and click install. This should be able to install upgrade repair.apk. Now once this is installed, click open. Normally you would be downloading this update zip file from the Retroid Pocket 2 server that is hosted in China. And this downloading process would take forever. 
but because we placed update zip file into the SD card already, it will skip the two days worth of downloading time for you guys. And yeah, you're quite welcome. Go ahead and press start repairing button and click OK. This will now begin the verification of the file and start updating to the latest firmware after you click repair. You may now proceed to step three. If you're following step 2B, make sure you have upgrade icon present in the app drawer and let's proceed to the next step. So take out the SD card from your device. You can either use the SD adapter for a micro SD card, slide in like that, or use the USB-A adapter for micro SD card. So once it's in it, this is my SD card to the right. Go ahead, create a new folder named upgrade and this is the file that you'll be downloading from the video description below and make sure it's this file for step 2b copy the file and put it inside the upgrade folder and make sure the spelling is correct in the upgrade folder because the upgrade app will be looking into this folder so make sure this file is inside the upgrade folder as such in the root directory of the SD card. So let's move on to the next step. Now take out the SD card and put it into your device again. Put the SD card back into the device. Now the SD card should have that file we just transferred. Go ahead, open the app drawer and click upgrade and click check update. Now because I already upgraded my firmware to the latest version, it's displaying the message but you will be seeing a download bar and it should be 100% because we just manually placed the file in there. So just press the button and it'll start upgrading the Android version. Let's move on to step three. This is now step three. If you have done the step 2A or 2B, you should be seeing this firmware update screen. Let us do its thing and it'll automatically restart once the installation is finished. If you have made it to this part of the video, congratulations, you now have the latest firmware of Android 6.0. When the stable build of Android 8.1 gets released, I will make another video with the new update file so you can skip the downloading time for that too. All you have to do at that point is following the same steps as this video's step 2B and you should be good to go. After the installation is finished, the device will boot into Retroid OS app it is recommended that you restart the device one more time after the device finishes the installation to reset the memory. Now let's take a look at what's changed in Retroid OS, then we will talk about the changes for the Android side. First, the battery has been better calibrated to show more accurate battery percentage information. A bug related to certain game freezing and pausing when R was pressed and is now fixed. External games added by the user now support the display of videos or thumbnails in the game menu. You just need to place the image file in PNG or the video file in MP4 with the same name as the game file in the same folder where the game file is. From the main menu screen, you can now favorite, delete, or change key mapping without having to go into the system settings. And the favorited game will show all the way at the top with the heart icon. The games that you downloaded from the game market are also listed at the top of the game menu. When all the games are deleted for that emulator, the BIOS file doesn't get deleted. In handheld settings, HDMI settings is added. You can now turn off the screen while the device is connected to the external display via HDMI. You can now change the key mapping for each game or for each emulator or for all games globally. Key combination setting also has been added. I'm not sure where this can be useful, but you can assign a macro button to press down multiple buttons. The Bluetooth controller gamepad settings have been also improved but I'm not sure if this actually works. I will cover this in the future video. Let's now enter the game and take a look at the in-game emulator menu. It now has a new interface. Retroid OS now supports a multiple save states and you can rename the save file. When you try to overwrite the save file, it will now prompt you that it will overwrite, helping accidental overwriting save file to happen less frequently. 
Now most games will support save states even with the arcade games that previously didn't have in the previous firmware version. Unfortunately, the in-game saves still doesn't work, but you'll at least have multiple emulator save states to work with. If you go to settings, there's a scanline option for all emulators. You can now apply the TV scanline effect for every game in Retroid OS. You can also set different video aspect ratio, full, stretched, origin, 4x3, 3x4. You can also set video rotation that may be useful for playing a vertical shoot em ups. Video shader has been added, but I'm not sure if anyone plays with these shaders. Video XBR can be turned on to better optimize performance when the shader is applied. There is also emulator specific settings for PlayStation 1, for example. You can now turn on the DualShock mode, just like in RetroArch. All other emulators also have emulator specific options, but I won't go too much in detail in this video. The worst part of this new update is that they really messed up the default key mapping for most of these emulators. For example, for GB, GBC, and GBA, A and B are somehow mapped as B and Y respectively. And for N64, L and R are mapped as X and Y respectively. To fix these wrong key mapping, you can enter the emulator-wise key mapping and map these backwards. Other systems like SNES and Dreamcast are also mapped differently, and I think this is corrected in Android 8.1 beta, but maybe they forgot to backport these changes. But now, you can manually change them to your likings, and hopefully they fix this in the next patches. Let's now head to the Android side to talk about the Android side changes. When you first boot into Android system, Google Play Store is disabled by default, so go to the Toolbox app, scroll down to Enable Disable Google Apps, and enable it. They now separated the Toolbox app from the Gamepad Mode app. In the Gamepad Mode app, you can configure the Gamepad related settings, such as Joystick Calibration and Setting Joystick Max Min and Dead Zone Adjustment. This may be useful for those who are experiencing joystick drift issues. You can now have three different modes, mouse mode, touch indicator mode, and gamepad mode. By default, the touch mode have replaced the mouse mode. You can configure this back in the menu. Battery also has been calibrated better to show more accurate battery percentage information. The toolbox added a new feature where you can partially allocate the SD card storage as a virtual internal storage, allowing you to have more space to install Android apps. If you're going to use this feature, make sure you back up the contents in your SD card because this process will reformat your SD card. I will cover this later in the separate video. So that was one heck of a list to cover. I hope I didn't lose you guys in the middle. Some of these changes are very welcome changes but still far from perfect. I don't think you will have any performance boost in the emulation, but these quality of life changes do improve the overall experiences. So I'm pretty excited to see what they will bring in the future updates. When we get the Android 8.1 update, I will be sure to cover that again, so stay tuned to my channel. I hope you guys liked the video, make sure you hit that like button if you liked it and sub it if you loved it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.